We'll get started. I'm going to start quite simply today. We're going to build a report, which is going to be a customer sales inquiry form. I'm going to start very simply. I'm going to show you how easy and how quickly we can build this report. Now, initially, I'm going to start with a blank spreadsheet in Excel. I'm going to choose one of these cells. And as I said, I've got, I want to report on customer net sales. I know I want to have a look at the net sales across a series of periods and a series of years. I'm going to start with the function ent cust net sales. Now, it's easy for me to say I'm going to start with that and type it in, as you've seen there, because as a training consultant, I'm expected to know a lot of these functions. But if I didn't know the actual function name, there's several ways I could find it most predominantly by using the help file in Iris Exchequer. And as you can see, there's a whole section at the bottom there for OLE. If I browse into that section, there's all sorts of information. There's troubleshooting information available in there. There's installation information available in there. There's also the OLE functions section. Double click in there and there's a series of options about how we can determine which function we need for the particular report we're building. There's an alphabetical reference. If I look in there initially, that just lists all of our 600 plus OLE functions in alphabetical order. They're mostly easy to follow. The customer ones will start with entcust, the job ones will start with entjc, general ledger ones with entgl, and so on. To make it a little bit simpler for, for us, and especially for me, we have broken them down into categorical references. The first section at the top there shows our Excel gets, what we call gets. That's the functions we use to get information from Exchequer into our Excel workbook. The second section underneath that is what we call our Excel saves. For those of you with the OLE save pack, that's where you can find the functions available to save information from Excel back into your Iris Exchequer company. I'm going to start with the gets. I know it's a customer get I'm looking for. So I click on the customer section. There's my list of customer get functions. And I can see there's one there called entcust net sales. If I click on that link, it gives me detail now to tell me exactly what this function does. And then it returns the net sales for the specified year and period from the customer's history. As a little tip, it also tells you that you can use a supplier account in there if it's net purchases you're interested in. Importantly though, at the top, it shows me the four variables I need to be able to get the information I want. In this case, I need a company, a year, a period, and a customer code. So if I return to my function in my spreadsheet now, I'm going to put that information in. First of all, it asks for a company. This is the company code, as you'll see in your multi-company manager. Some of you may recognize the classic demo company of Aleco One. For those of you with multi-companies, you'll be able to see how you can report on all of those companies once or individually. I'm going to put in the year I want. In this case, I'm going to choose 2007. The period I want will start with period one. And finally, the customer I want. In this case, Linto one. As soon as it recognizes a valid function, it's asking me to sign in with my credentials. These are the same credentials you use when signing into Exchequer. <coughs> and it's now returned a value. So I can see straight away that my net sales to Linto one for uh, Financial period one of 2007 is just under £805. Quick and easy and an instant result. However, at the moment, that doesn't really mean much to anyone. I'm sure you'll all agree, passing that on to someone else, a number on its own doesn't mean anything. Let's expand on this report and let's bring those variables inside the function outside of the function. So the same variables as before, I'm going to add the company code, the customer code, and I'm going to start to construct my sheet by saying all my columns are going to be my periods, and my rows 
are going to be my years. I can simply edit the function by highlighting the cell and clicking on the FX button in the formula bar. As you can see at the moment, it's got the information that I've typed in there. I want to change that. I want to point, first of all, the company to the code I've entered in in cell C5. Now, there's two ways I could do this. The first way is I just simply type C5 as the coordinates. And you can see automatically on the right-hand side there, it shows me the results of that, which is ELEC01. Because I'm going to copy this function multiple times across my spreadsheet, I want to lock it in place so it's always looking at cell C5. To do that, I can press the F4 key. The F4 key places a dollar in front of both the column and row grid references to lock it to that cell. I could, if I wanted, manually type those dollar signs instead of pressing the F4 key. For the year, again, I want to point it to its cell, uh, in this case, B10. Instead of typing it in, I can just click on the cell like so, and it places the coordinates in that cell. I want to lock it again, but I only want to lock it to the column this time. So I could press the F4 key three times until I get the dollar just in front of the column reference of B. Again, if I prefer, I could type the dollar sign in there. I'm going to do the same for the period, and this time lock it simply to the row by pressing F4 twice, and finally, I'm going to do the same to the customer code and lock it in place. When I click OK, there's no actual difference to the result. I've not told it to do anything different, but now, by changing any one of those variables, I can instantly get a result change, like so. So I've now changed it to show me period 2 of 2007 instead of period 1. Using that and expanding on the report to build it with all the periods available, I'm simply going to extend my periods across like so and my years down. And then using the Excel copy and drag option, I can copy that across all the cells like so, and down. And in a very, very short time, because of the way I've locked the function and locked the cell grid references, I've now got a report that shows me the net sales for 2007 to 2010, broken down to all 12 financial periods. So what have I covered so far? Very simply, I've started to create a simple and informative customer sales inquiry form. I've added in the function of sales to that form, giving it the valuable variables it needs of the company you want to get it from. So again, with multi-companies, you can see more than one company the year I want to report on, the period I want to report on, that's the financial period, and the customer code. I've expanded on that to produce multiple results on the function. Like so, by extending the periods and using the copy and drag function, we've now got a much broader range of results. Let's look, have a look at some additional formatting. At the moment, as a report, it still isn't really as informative as we'd probably like. If I was to give that to you as a report, you'd look at that and say, all right, I can see that's some, valuable, some values over some periods and some years, but who's it for? What's it telling me? First things first, I'm sure I don't need to explain to you how to do this, but I'll give it a name. Secondly, it's going to be really important to me to know, as the recipient, what company am I looking at? Where is this information coming from? So I'm now going to add my second function to the sheet. And this is called ent company name. I simply point it at the company cell as before and lock it in place. Press return. And now it tells us that the company is Electrics or Us. 
Brilliant. I'm a little bit further to knowing what I'm looking at. So the next stage will be the customer. Again, I've got another similar function I'm going to add to it called ent cust name. I have to point it at the company again so we're getting the right name from the right company and point it at the customer code like so. And now it's returned the name of that customer. So I can see these values are from the Electrics R Us company for the customer Linton Alarm Distribution. But exactly what are those values? Well, let's give that a description as well. I'm going to edit the field I've put my year in, and I'm going to call it Net Sales 2007. As soon as I store that, however, you'll notice that the, it doesn't recognize that as a valid year to be able to formulate those results. Here's a trick that a lot of people mentioned the last time I presented this, they didn't actually know. Some of you may. For the year, because I've entered some text into that field, I only actually want to pull out the last four characters of that text as the year. I could do that with an Excel function, this is not an Exchequer function, called write. What this is asking, well, what I'm asking it to do with this function is to say, starting at the right hand end of the cell, I've pointed it at the cell I want to look at, in this instance, B10, and then I tell it how many characters to count backwards from the right hand end of that cell, in this case, four. And straight away, you can see it's returned the value I want of 2007. If I store that and again copy that across, like so. The values remain the same, but the, the report itself is much more descriptive. And you've also seen very quickly, I'll rush through it a little bit, is the net sales by dragging and copying it because it recommend, recognizes the numerical value on the end, it's automatically incremented it for me. So now I know, as the recipient of this report, exactly what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the net sales for the customer Linton Alarm Distribution in my company of Electrics R Us for all 12 financial periods across the years 2007 to 2010. Unfortunately, it's not been very busy in 2009, 2010. I'm sure you all know it's been pretty tough times. Okay. So from an additional formatting point of view now, we have a look at how we can make it look a lot more professional. We've added in some functions. We can also tart it up a little bit. And as you can see here, in true Blue Beta style, here's one I've prepared earlier. By simply using some formatting, changing the colors of some of the text, putting in some grids and some borders, I've smartened it up a bit and made it look a little bit more professional for my management team. What's next? Well, the next step would be to say, how can I get more from this same report? So far, I've used only three of our 600 plus functions. I'm not going to use any more, but I do want to extend the report to show me cumulative sales for the same range of periods. Okay, so I'll start off by adding in my row range. I've added my text in in exactly the same way as previously, and I can drag that down like so to give me my year. So I've prepared to get my cumulative sales in on that report now. 